Thank God, even though we have an early morning service as well, one hour later than yours, of course, as I've indicated, that this was not the weekend where we would change the clocks. I'd be real messed up by the end of the day because we go all day today, wrapping up with Holy Baptism and Holy Communion at 6 o'clock tonight. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, be unto all of you as I greet you in Jesus' name. God's servant David was coming to the end of his life. God had been good to him. From the formative, from his formative days of shepherding sheep, where he received the inspiration to write the words, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. All the way to this point in his life where he had looked back over his journey and proclaimed I once was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his or her seed begging bread. During, during, during these last days for King David, he has made his son Solomon his successor. As verse 1 states. It also states that he was old and full of days. Again, that's not a pejorative. It's not a put down. That's a title that was given to those who had earned it. Who had become wise and seasoned. Old and full of days. It's the language used about Moses. Old and full of days. and Find it elsewhere. But he thought in his own wisdom that he would call together, according to the word of God, Israel. And having called Israel together. He summoned for the priest and the Levites. And in verse 3, he begins to give them specific assignments. Our focus today, this morning, brothers and sisters, is on David's desires for the Levites. We read that they numbered 38,000 strong. David divided them into several specific groups. If you were to read the verses that I did not read, you will find that 24,000 were put in charge of administering worship in the sanctuary. 6,000 were to serve as officials and to serve as judges. 4,000 were to serve as security guards for the sanctuary, temple grounds. And the remaining 4,000 were to serve in the, in the orchestra as musicians. Can you imagine uh, serving God as a musician, 4,000 strong, no doubt on a, ro- on a rotating basis. Nevertheless, giving praise to God. The significant reason for David assigning these designations was due to the fact that God, according to verse 25, had given Israel rest. Everybody say rest. Had given Israel rest. This rest 
according to the way the King James renders it does not mean that Israel could now uh, go to Florida or go to Arizona and claim retirement. No, that's not the kind of rest we're talking about here. Here, rest is used to indicate that Israel's past of wanderings in the wilderness were over. All of that 40 year journey over. And verse 26 even says that now they no longer had to keep pitching, keep taking up and tearing down and carrying the tabernacle from place to place along their journey. Now they have a home in the holy city of Israel and they could now have rest. When God gives rest, it's either for one or two purposes. On the one hand, it's a way that God allows us to know that we have completed an assignment. And as a result, he gives us rest in order for us to catch back up with ourselves. Secondly, he gives us rest, which I like to refer to as a state of being. It's in knowing that God is with me and I am with God. A state of being. It's what the old people, our mothers and fathers used to call and sing about when they said, it is well with my soul. That's rest. Because if you are a child of God, you can have all kinds of confusion going on around you. But if God has given you rest, you can still stand still in the midst of H-E-double-L and know that the Lord will still fight your battles. Gives his people rest. At the same time, the rest that God gives to his people, uh, yes, essentially positions us for the next thing that God wants us to do. The Bible says God gave Israel rest. Rest, rest, rest. And again, verse 25 states that they were to dwell in Jerusalem because of this state of rest. And when God gives you rest, this is what he has to do. He sets the stage for what's coming next. But it's up to God's man or woman to fill in the details. God gives the big picture. But then having set the vision, he begins to fill in the blanks through his man or through his woman. That's why David now speaks. And David says, here's what I want you to do. He says, talking now to the Levites, he says, I know that you are sons of Aaron. And I know that you are worshipers, if you will. But I need some men who will be able to carry out some basically perfunctory duties. You're not going to get your name in the paper? Nobody may, may ever, ever pat you on your back. But I need you to take care of some things. I need you to maintain the courtyard. I need you to keep the furniture and the utensils clean. No big thing. I, I, I need you to care, uh, yes, for, for those uh, particulars that have to do with worship. The instruments, make sure that they're tuned properly. And I need you to make sure that there's always bread on the table. And make sure that the house of God essentially stays in order. But I want you to do one more thing. And that's where I want to pick up. And then I'll bid you good morning. He says in verse 30, I need you to stand every morning. And give thanks and praise to God. 
And it's almost as though it's an editorial comment that's added on. He says, and at even, at evening. Meaning that the emphasis is not on the evening, the emphasis is on the morning. I need, I need some men who will, who will stand and give thanks and praise to the Lord in the morning. Because many have positions, but they don't have assignments. In effect, David was saying, I don't want to leave here. My work is almost over. I don't want to leave here having a whole lot of people, a whole lot of men just standing around doing nothing. It's wonderful to have a gang of men, but if they don't know why they are around, they'll create more problems than it's worth. He says, I know, I know, I know we have all of you wonderful Levites. And I know I've given you some assignments. But he recognized that the cleaning of the courtyard and the making sure that there was bread, shoe bread on the table, uh, yes, was just mundane work. David knew that assignments gave purpose. And God has called us brothers because he wants to purpose our lives. Yes, yes, it's one thing to have your, your position, one thing to have your title, but you ought to want more than a title. You ought to want to be serving the Lord with gladness and giving God praise. Therefore, David was saying, again, I don't need you just to have a seat and a uniform and a badge on. Never mind the title, even though they can be useful, they serve a purpose. But I want you to stand and give thanks and praise to the Lord in the morning. This is why, this is why, this is why I, I, I argued that those angels, those two angels, doesn't say it in Acts 1, but let's just call them angels. Two men in white apparel who showed up because the disciples, that's their, that's their title, apostle, that, that's, their, that's their position. They, they were there and they saw Jesus ascend up into heaven, but, but that's all they were stuck on. They, they were fixated. Granted, from a human perspective, who wouldn't be? You've never seen anybody go up into the heavens. And the Bible says they were kind of just fixated so much so that the angels basically had to reprimand them. Why are y'all standing around gazing up into heaven? Don't you know this same Jesus whom you've seen ascend up into heaven? He's coming back in like manner. In other words, since he's coming back, y'all need to get busy. Stop just standing around looking up. You need to be helping somebody and giving God the glory. The Bible alludes to, I think I'm on good ground here, Bishop Bryant. The Bible alludes to, for example, in Mark 5, it's, it's an illusion. It's, it's, it's kind of aimed at. The Bible aims at what I'm going to call professional mourners. Jesus had been summoned to the house of Jairus, his daughter uh, first of all was sick, but then she subsequently died. Jesus said she hadn't died, she would just sleep. But when Jesus gets there, he has to deal with professional mourners. People whose assignment it was. Hope y'all hearing me. In the Middle East, they still have them by the way. When somebody died, they took it as their assignment to show up and start lamenting and wailing. That was their assignment. I think I'd also parenthetically say they are not locked into biblical antiquity. We still have professional mourners. Y'all know folk who just love funerals? 
They just show up. No, they don't even know the person who done died. They just show up. Because, Lord have mercy. I, I'm not a funeral person. I, I'm, I listen. I, ain't, I don't like being around dead stuff. I like being around life. Uh, yeah, but you got professional mourners. Well, uh, let's just take that to a whole nother level. The Lord needs some professional praisers. And in this instance, he needs because it's not really, Pastor Brian touched on this, it's not really in the male psyche to really want to come out and emote. But here David understood something because David was not just a worshiper, he was a praiser. He did not mind emoting. David would dance for the Lord. He was a musician. He did not mind giving glory and praise to the Lord. And he said, I need some men who are going to stand in the morning and see it as their job, as their, as their assignment to thank and praise God. I just want to know if any professional praisers here today, a man or woman, anybody here don't have to be paid. You don't have to be begged. You don't have to be primed up. Nobody has to sing your song. No, nobody has to be the one behind the microphone singing a solo and you just have to wait till that same person. Now, when you think about the goodness of Jesus, and all he's already done for you your soul you can be riding in your car and just start amen thanking and praising him you don't even know if the light was red green or yellow you don't even know how you got to where you are there but for the grace of God because you don't mind giving him the glory and the praise because you know that he's been good to you and even if he hasn't necessarily been good to you today, just because he's God, he's still worthy of our glory and our praise. Somebody ought to be a professional praiser. Nobody. I'm here to tell you, you don't need to sign a job application. You don't need to go through an interview process. You don't need to have a good resume. Just give your life to the Lord and give him the glory. Give, give him the praise because he's that kind of God. Not about, not about, not about your position. You ought to be on assignment. And many, watch this, many only give God praise and thanks for what he has done. Not for what he will do. Watch the text. It just makes sense, I believe, if you have manners, and if you grew up decently, it just makes sense. Yes. It's courtesy. It's good manners. It's, it's something that you ought to just do. Uh, yes. When somebody's been good to you, understand that, that you that you say thank you that's that's in response you with me that that's in response to what somebody or something or, or something has happened to you you just react by saying thank you yeah some some even express appreciation they will they will leave a tip they will send a card more so than just say thank you because they want the person to know that they are appreciated for what has happened. Again, that just makes sense. It's, it's, it makes sense to do that in response for something that has happened to you. It is a matter of faith huh. to thank and to express appreciation for what will happen. But I've learned that really it's also a state of maturity to be able to say thank you before something has happened. It's a matter of maturity, brothers, to say thank you to the Lord even before the Lord does anything for you. We're good at waiting until the close of the day and look back and give thanks to God for what has happened. You know, you get down on your knees at your bedside 
because it's nighttime and you say thank you Lord for bringing me through another day David said to do it in the evening he adds again that little editorial piece at the end of the 30th verse he said do it in the evening but that's not the emphasis the emphasis again is on giving thanks and praise in the morning in the morning in I like the morning I like, I like I like the morning when God has brought me through the night you do know that's about the only way to get through the night don't you God has to bring you through the night because while you've been sleeping and slumbering not even knowing your right hand from your left hand the devil been setting traps for you in the midnight hour uh, yes 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 but I like the morning when the old folk used to say God touch me with the finger of his divine love and woke me up early to see a brand new day bid my golden moments to roll on just a little while longer i like the morning i i do i really do i like the morning i like to go to my window and see the sun coming up looking like somebody pinned a large corsage on the bosom of the sky i i like the morning here yeah, thank thank god for the morning because even while i've been sleeping god dispatched an angel anybody here still believe in angels to camp about my bedside all night long uh, and old folk again used to sing all day and all night angels keep watch over you and over me but if none of that even ever happened just because it's the start of a new day never mind what happened during the night but just because you do know that weeping man do it for the night but joy just because it's the morning time David said you ought to get up and before you do anything before anything even happens to you before you get your breakfast before you go to work before you go to the classroom before you even put water on your body before you brush your teeth before you get dressed before you comb your hair you ought to rise and give God the glory because you don't know what's going to happen during the course of the day but just say thank you anyhow for what's going to happen say thank you because it's going to be a blessed day give him the praise because God will front and fight every one of my battles thank and praise him because the devil is a liar thank and praise him even before noon time before you get your little break and have a little cup of coffee just thank him anyhow because you don't know what might happen but since God is still in charge and he's given you a brand new day you ought to rise and shine and give him the glory for what will happen as a matter of fact it's a biblical mandate to praise the Lord I wish I had a witness in here it's a biblical mandate every day by the grace of God you ought to rise and give him the glory hallelujah make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing come into his courts with here it is praise anybody here know that the Lord is good I said anybody here know that the Lord is good for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth unto all generations and every now and then the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so it's a biblical mandate to give thanks and praise to the Lord you ought to give thanks in all things not for all things but thank him in all things I'm going through health problems but I'm going to thank you anyhow I don't have a job I'm unemployed, but I'm going to thank him anyhow. My family's on the verge, but I'm going to thank him anyhow. I'm going through hell. I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm going to thank him anyhow. I said it's a biblical mandate to give thanks and praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said hallelujah. Is there anybody? here who doesn't mind giving thanks and praise I will I said I will I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continuously be in my mouth my soul I said my
my soul shall make her boast unto the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, 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 oh. Magnify the Lord with me and let us, come on men, and let us exalt his name forever. Is he worthy? Anybody here got breath this morning? Anybody here know you alive this morning? Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm getting ready to bid you good morning. But one more thing. Watch this before you take your seat. For those of you already standing, David said, I don't need any lazy brothers. I don't need any brothers who just going to be sitting around sucking up air. He said, I want you to stand and give thanks in the morning. Did you hear what I just said? You can't give so enough glory and praise to the Lord all stuck up and all bottled up. But sometimes if you got enough strength, you got to stand on your feet. You got to rise on your feet and declare this is the day that the Lord has made. I can do a few things, but I can't make a day. Only God can make a day. And since he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will, I will, I will be glad and rejoice in it. I don't have to wait till 10 o'clock. I don't have to wait till noon. I don't have to wait till 3 in the afternoon. I don't have to wait till the evening news. But right early this morning, I said right early this morning, he's worthy. I said he's worthy. I said he's worthy. Somebody ought to take a stand. Did you hear what I said? Somebody like Dr. Jamal Bryan ought to take a stand. Stand for Michael Brown. Stand for Ferguson. You ought to stand for something. If you're going to sit, you're going to take anything. But if you stand, you can cash your vote. If you stand, God will give you power. If you stand, hallelujah, you can shame the devil. Is he worthy? I said, is he worthy? Is he worthy? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When I rose this morning, some of y'all don't know that song, but when I rose this morning, I ain't have no doubt. When I got down on my knees, I didn't have no doubt. When I saw the bright sunshine, I didn't have no doubt. When I came on out to church, I didn't have no doubt. I got to go on to New Shallow now, but somebody ought to shout, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Is he worthy? Shout yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Somebody put that praise on assignment right now. 